Do you believe that you have limiting beliefs about money? If you are dead set on believing that to be true, then this video is not for you. But if you're open to the possibility that maybe so-called money blocks or limiting beliefs about money aren't real and that they might, they might be convenient excuses for taking action in your business, then this video is for you. So first of all, why am I talking about limiting beliefs about money and money blocks? Because in 10 years of coaching entrepreneurs, I have seen hundreds, at least maybe thousands of people who have gone through various money transformation type of programs to clear their limiting beliefs around money, to get rid of their money blocks, and they usually pay hundreds of dollars, maybe thousands of dollars for these programs that could have gone into their savings account. They instead paid somebody who taught them about money beliefs and how to clear them. Um, and after, because I have seen lots of people go through these kinds of programs, almost nobody emerges. Okay, some people emerge like they're excited about something and then they maybe have a little bit of change in their money situation. But then a year or two or three later, I follow up with them. They're in the same money situation. Working so much, so much effort on clearing their money blocks. So what if money blocks aren't real? What if money blocks are, I could just make up, uh, I, you have an inner demon called Rorschach, okay? Rorschach, if you don't clear this inner demon called Rorschach, you will never be successful in business. It's because of people who clear this inner demon called Rorschach that, that allows you to uh, be successful in business. So I'm going to sell you my program to clear the inner demon. Trust me, I have seen, you know, right? Okay. So it's convenient for people to sell these programs to you. And again, I'm not saying that there is no such thing as money block. I'm not uh, scientifically uh, making an absolute statement. But what I am saying is what I have seen as people go through so many programs like this is that it doesn't really help in the long term. But I know what does help. You know what does help? Consistency of content, consistency of distributing that content, consistency of making offers that are resonant with your audience, and by the way, consistency of saving money. Those four things help a lot somebody's money situation. So because I don't have a program to sell you on how to clear your money blocks, I hope that you can trust me a little bit more than somebody who is trying to sell you a program to clear your money blocks and your limiting beliefs about money. Now, I am, again, I'm not saying that maybe you don't have an upbringing where your, your authority figures and parents say money don't grow on trees and you have um, you know, negative beliefs about money and uh, like and so money is evil, et cetera. Here's, here's what I am saying. You don't have to give energy to those things. And the problem that I have with the idea of clearing money blocks is that you're giving more energy to the money blocks, ironically. Get this, okay? Uh, it's kind of like if I believe that I am um, socially awkward, okay? If I'm trying to clear my social awkwardness, the irony is I get into a social situation and I give more energy to my social awkwardness because I'm trying to clear it. If instead I give energy to other people, okay, and get really curious about other people and how I can help them and notice how others are interacting and try to join into that energy, my social awkwardness goes away, okay, because I'm not no longer focusing on myself. And that's what so many, so many of the sort of inner transformation programs, this is, this is my problem with them, is that there's so much self-focus and the not not just it's a good thing to focus on the positive aspects of yourself wonderful but when you're focused on the negative aspects of yourself it tends to expand the negative aspects of yourself within you because they just start to see the negative aspects of yourself in this area and that area and this area and instead what if we focus on the positive aspects of ourselves give energy to that and also give energy to other people because guess what money comes from other people Okay, you can work all you want on clearing money blocks, but until somebody gives you their money, you don't have any income in your business. So therefore, 
you can focus on clearing money blocks or you can focus on other people and how you can serve them in a way that they understand. This is why I teach courses on marketing because that's a real thing. It's about other people. It's not about our own inner demons because if, again, if you focus on that, there is unlimited numbers of inner demons that you can dig up and they get bigger and bigger the more you focus on them. I, I've tried it, you know, trust me. So four things to focus on. Consistency of content, give energy that, oh, now you might say, well, George, I can't be consistent in my content. I can't be, make offerings because I have money blocks and I have limiting beliefs about money. So I can't even charge people money for the things that I, okay, all right. So let's talk about that. What if you believe that you have a money block? That's why you can't charge enough money for your services. Let's talk about that. Okay. So here is how I prefer to solve that problem. Okay. I prefer for you to get into as much action in serving others as possible and noticing the impact that you, your service is having on them. The more you do that, okay, at whatever rate you're charging, first of all, charge a rate that you are comfortable with. Charge a rate that you are comfortable with. Don't listen to the money block experts that are telling you they're essentially expanding your insecurity by saying, you're not charging enough. You must have a money block. You're not char you're not, you should be charging more. But if you're not charging more, you must have a money block. BS. I have never worked on my money block situations, okay? And I have a thriving business and I'm doing well financially. And my father, who came from an extremely poor childhood, never worked on his money block. He didn't, you know, and, and he had a thriving business, okay? And I know others who have never worked on their money blocks and have thriving businesses. Okay, I, I don't, I, Warren Buffett probably and Bill Gates probably never worked on their money blocks and, and look where they are. Elon Musk, never heard of any of those guys talking about money blocks and limiting beliefs about, mo about money. What they do talk about is action. What they do talk about is saving money and being entrepreneurial and getting out there and, and trying to create something of value for others, right? That's what they talk about. So don't give energy to your fears and your doubts. If you focus on that and try to clear that stuff, those things get bigger. You might have a temporary victory and somehow clearing it because you've psyched yourself into some kind of fake confidence. This is my problem with those things. Fake it till you make it. You know, a lot of the rah-rah programs like T. Harv Eker and all those guys, again, I've never been to those programs. So, but what I perceive is that's a lot of rah-rah fake confidence. I've seen so many people go through those programs and they're still where they are. That's the, I see the evidence, you know, um, in the Bible, right, it says, uh, you, shall know, you shall know them by their fruits, right? Test the spirits. You shall know them by their fruits. So the people who go through these programs and then they're, they're still where they are, that's the fruit of such programs, right? And so, okay. Um, so if you're, if you're having problems charging money, right? No, oh, charge, don't charge enough. Just don't charge much money. Just charge a little, charge the least amount of money that you feel comfortable with. I know this is counterintuitive, counter what everybody else is saying. Everyone else is saying you should charge what you're worth, charge more. I say charge less. Charge the, the least amount of money that you can where you can sustain yourself and be comfortable. Now, that means you gotta make enough sales. That's a separate conversation. But charge the least that you feel comfortable saying the number. If, I say, if you say the number and you feel uncomfortable, it's because of many factors why that is. It's because you may be overcharging based on your market. You may be overcharging based on your, your sense of your confidence of your own skills. And guess your own skills will become, you will, um, and now some people, by the way, I, I am super confident in my skills. And I don't have to charge as much as my peers do because I don't really need to make that much money. I mean, I make enough money already. So I, I make enough and I want to be as compassionate as I can to the people who are, who are paying me. So that's why I charge the, the least that I can, right? But wherever, even if you charge $50 an hour, $25, I don't know, whatever number you feel so comfortable saying, you feel so proud to say that that's how much your service is. You so, and, the, and the other party, the person buying your services, oh my God, that's such a great deal. That is a wonderful situation. You feel so confident saying the number. They feel like it's a, such a great deal. Are you kidding me? Please sign me up. It's a wonderful situation. Now, as you keep on providing your service and you see the impact that your service is making on others, at some point, guess what? 
you're going to get tired of charging that same amount. You will get tired of it, right? And, and as you also see your peers charging higher amounts and you notice that their service is not as impactful as yours is, that's when you raise your rates. Because then you are raising your rates not based on a fake confidence that's rah, rah, psych yourself into affirmations of I am worth it, blah, blah, blah. That's fake, okay? And it, it eats away at your conscience. You don't really feel, you have to like psych yourself into this fake, I, fake state of being. Instead, when, you, when you've served people so much, they, say, they keep saying it's a great deal. You notice your peers are charging more maybe and they're not as effective. Then you're like, God, I gotta charge more. This is ridiculous. You start even to feel a little bit resentment of the rate that you're charging. My God, please raise your rates at that point. And then when you raise your rates, you feel great saying the next rate because you know that you're a great deal, that you, they're gonna get great benefits from your service. They also think it's a great deal because of your testimonials and, the, and your, your, your genuine confidence. That's what I'm talking about. I want you to have genuine confidence in the rates you're charging without having to use affirmations about how much you're worth. And I've written about this before. Anytime people say, charge what you're worth, that is, that's a spiral into a black hole. Because you know what you're worth? You're actually worth infinite. There's no amount of money you can charge for being in your presence and what you're, you're, you're infinite. So stop talking about charging what you're worth. All we're talking about is charging based on the market rate for the confidence of your own skills and the impact that you're making. That's it. So if you're feeling scared about charging money, it's because you haven't had enough experience seeing the impact of your service on other people. No wonder you're having confidence issues. So what you got to do is get out there and provide more of your service. And for some people, for some of you, if you're just starting out, it might be providing your service for free or for such a ridiculously low amount of money that people go, God, that's such a great deal. Are you kidding me? Right? Does that make sense? Let me know below uh, this video if, if it's making sense to you. So um, I'm, hopefully, if you believe what I'm saying, you will save yourself hundreds of dollars, maybe thousands of dollars, not have to buy those money clearing, limiting beliefs kinds of programs. Again, I'm not saying, because I've never been through those programs, so maybe I'm ignorant and, and maybe those programs are amazing. I'm just saying I've seen a lot of people go through those programs and it hasn't worked for them. So I, I'm just making an observation here. So maybe you shouldn't spend money on those kinds of things. You should save your money, okay? Or maybe spend money on learning how to market your services and, and spend money on a coach that keeps you accountable in getting out there with your content, making sure enough people are seeing your content. So Facebook ads, I spend a lot of money on Facebook ads. Okay, a lot of money on that. So make, making sure people see my content all the time. I make sure that I am offering something every single month and making sure people are seeing that offer. Okay, spend money on Facebook ads to do that. I make sure that I am always in touch with my market and finding out what they need that I can then offer. I have at least one audience research conversation, every, fan interview. I do at least one fan interview every week. So if, if someone like me who doesn't need to do fan interviews, is doing them to figure out what the market needs, how much more might you need to be doing that if you're not yet at a thriving business? I do at least one a week. Sometimes I do two or three per week, even though I don't need to. But I still want to stay in touch with my audience to find out what they are buying and how I can help and how I might be able to create something that's even better than what they're buying in my field, in my field, obviously. So I hope this is helpful. I really uh, want to help you with spending money in the right way and working on the right things, working in a way that's an upward spiral towards more and more skillfulness, more and more its excellence, more and more uh, being in touch with others rather than the spiral downward into your inner demons of your limiting beliefs and all that junk, which will forever, ex you are such, your ego is so brilliant that it will forever manufacture inner demons, multiply, multiply. You first think it's a money, one limiting belief and you'll find out you have a million limiting beliefs. It never ends. It really does never end. That's why people are, uh, make lots of money selling these programs to you. So don't spiral in, in, into your negativity. Spiral upwards into action and being in touch with others out of love and service. 
and observation of how you can be of more value to others. That's what we should put our effort into. That's what we should spend our money on. So thank you for those of you who were able to join me live. Sharon, Captain, Gord, Antonio, um, thank you for, for being here. And let's see, um, Captain says, I agree. Um, no, I'm infinite. No amount of money can define what I'm worth exactly. You know, So putting money based on your worth is a very dangerous thing. Please stop doing that. Plus, stop using the word worth with how much you're charging. And instead, how much you're charging is simply pegged based on the market rate, right? If you're really uncomfortable saying a rate, it's because you're saying a rate that's higher than the market, okay? That's it. That's it. If everybody else around you is charging $100 an hour and you're trying to charge $200 an hour, no wonder you're having a problem saying that rate. But if everyone around you is you know, charging $50 an hour and you're charging, you know, if everyone around you is charging 100 and you're charging 70, you can say that rate all day long and feel so good about it, right? Again, everyone around you at the same level of skill and impact, right? What are they charging? That's what you need to discover, right? So um, Gord says, what about dealing with agencies that want to hire you? If you have defined rates, what's a reasonable agency commission to give for them? Uh, to find you at work as a freelancer at 10 10 okay so that that's maybe a separate question i would um i mean uh, so when it comes to commissions for services yeah what i have seen is typically anywhere between five percent all the way up to you know if you well i mean in, in a temp agency world right they charge something like 30 to 50 percent what the temp worker is earning right the temp worker is earning you know 30 dollars an hour supposedly or no the temp worker earns fifteen dollars an hour the the temp agency earns fifteen like it's like half and half sometimes but in terms of a freelancer agency rate i mean anywhere between five and twenty five percent is my guess i think you need to probably ask around ask other freelancers i don't work for agencies so i'm not sure um, when it comes to selling products like online courses the commission rates usually fifty percent so do it yourself products are usually fifty percent Services, nah, somewhere between 5 and 25% range is probably the case. Uh, Natalie, thanks for joining me here. Gord says, I'm told by others to charge more, but I'm not comfortable yet. I want to build my client base a little more and be sure the extra value is there. Great. You know, Gord, that's, that's the right response, in my opinion. If you're not comfortable charging that additional amount, I mean, look around you. Again, compare the level of your impact and skill with those with similar level of impact and skill. What are they charging? Okay, you should be charging around the same amount. That's it. Or you can charge less and feel amazing about it and be like the best deal in town, right? So um, and and make it and, and make enough money based on volume, right? And by the way, volume means that you build your skills faster anyway, which is which is also wonderful. So anyway, I hope this is helpful. If you have any questions that you love for me to cover in future videos, I'm always open to you. My, my main intention, though, is just to help you focus your energies in the positive directions of your, your true skill, your potential possible skill. Keep working on that. Humbly offer your services, and you will get to a point where you, you feel naturally like you want to charge more. You just do. And um, keep working on understanding what the market needs and wants from you and offering that. And you can't go wrong. You will just keep making enough money, more money, and uh, you'll, you won't have any more money problems. And please also save money. That's the other thing I should say. I'm a, I'm a consistent saver, and that's the skill uh, that I hope you, you will develop as well. Don't, don't uh, do any silly investments. Don't do any investments that are – that's why I don't invest in cryptocurrency. I, I, I've been against cryptocurrency since the beginning. I, don't, I have zero dollars in cryptocurrency. I know people think I'm ignorant. Cryptocurrency, the new thing. Yes, once it gets more mainstream, I might invest. But anyway, I don't do any. I'm so conservative with my money. I spend, I spend on Facebook ads. I spend on some coaching, um, and that's all I spend in terms of business. And of course, some services in my business. You know, various website services, things like that. But be conservative. Oh, I spend money on online courses. So I myself buy online courses to build my skill level and, and get better at things. But other than that, don't don't buy any money money mindset programs, in my opinion. So, all right, I um, be well. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and focus your energies in positive directions that uplift you instead of make you question your insecurities. You are amazing. Go out there, serve others, notice what they need, and be a value. 
to them. Take care.